Hi everyone, welcome back to Computing Millions. So this is part two of the Python stock screener, and uh, we're just going to be going over the basics of web scraping. Now the reason why you want to learn how to web scrape is because most of the data on stocks are not uh, up for download for free, or there might not be certain statistics that you need um, just lying around in CSV files. So the best thing to learn is data scraping or web scraping. So you can get the information easily off of websites and use them in your program. The reason why it's so good to uh, stock screen or have a custom stock screen is because you can do whatever you want with the information and um, you can apply things like neural nets to it and a bunch of stuff. So it's just very versatile. Uh, what am I doing? Google Finance. So we're going to be looking at Google Finance. We're going to be scraping data off of Google Finance. And the way that we're going to be doing it is we're going to be, first, we're going to download the information uh, or the source code. And then we are going to find specific patterns in the source code and go from there to take the value or take the information out. So first thing we're going to look at is our source code. Um, so as you can see, there's a pattern right here. There's the TD class is equal to value, and that value or that pattern is consistent um, for all the things in this little list. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, find anything with that pattern, and after that we're going to grab the information. So, and that's going to allow us to get all this information in this um, in this little section right here. So let's actually program this. So we're going to import uh, URL uh, lib or URL lib2, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to have HTML, which is going to be equal to URL lib dot URL open. And what this does is it just allows us to open up um, a website. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the URL for the TELUS Corporation on the TSX and we're going to put it in quotations and we're going to paste it. Uh, next thing you have to do is you have to actually read from it so it's going to be HTML dot read lines and it will just read all the lines for you and you can print that. And now you'll see that you're going to download all the information right there and that's all the source code. So now, the next thing we want to do is we want to actually go through each line and uh, find the pattern. So our pattern is going to be equal to whatever the pattern is here, which we're going to just copy and we're going to paste it. We're going to copy and paste. So now we have our little pattern here. And we're going to put it in quotations mar quotation marks because it should be a string. Um, if you have double quotations uh, inside of the actual string, then use single quotations to differentiate. <clears throat> and we're also going to have a list of values, which is going to equal to nothing. So now we're going to go four lines, or four line in... HTML, which will iterate through all the lines in the HTML, uh, and we're going to have a temporary value, um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through each character, so we're going to go for i in range of the length of the line, uh, if i is greater than or equal to the length of the pattern then we're going to go val plus equals the line at i so what this is going to do is if we've uh, managed to if the index is greater than the length of this so if it goes through all of these and it it was correct each single time then after that we're going to add on the value the reason we're doing this is because uh, everything after this uh, this pattern here 
is some information that we want to take uh, that we want to scrape off of the website. But what if the pattern is not correct? So what we're going to do is we're going to have an elif, and we're going to go i is less than the length of the pattern. Uh, this is just in case uh, one of the lines is um, not even long enough, or it's not even the length of the pattern, so we can't really iterate through each one of the characters, and it'll give us an error. And line at i uh, does not equal pattern at i. So that's just going to check, is the current character the right character uh, in the pattern? And if it isn't, then we're just going to break out of the loop. And that'll be it. So now we have a pattern recognition. And we're going to say if val does not equal nothing, then list of values dot append val. And then we are going to print the list of values. And now you'll see when we download it, you'll see that all the information is now stored in the list. And we have, oh, we'll go side by side here. Um, and now you'll see we have the range right here. So our range is 45.25 to 45.72, which is correct. We have our PE ratio, which is 2108. And since this is downloading, if we refresh, they should be the same thing. Yeah, as you can see. Um, so this is great. So let's say we wanted to actually just display the PE ratio, or we wanted to add that to a variable. Um, we can take the, we can look at this and go, we can count them 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And now we have the value of the PE ratio. If we run it. As you can see, it's 21.09. Uh, and if you wanted market cap, you can just do 4. And now you're able to scrape the data off of Google, Google Finance. And this is the um, normal practice for scraping information. Um, with different websites comes different types of patterns and different types of things, but you can just modify the script to your liking uh, so you can compensate for different patterns. Um, so in the next video, we're going to be looking at my script, and I'll leave a link in the description to the actual script so you can use it, and we're just going to go over it. Uh, so that's going to end it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get the notification for part 3.